Well, today we're in Brixton in South London. These are just random lyric ideas. Sea salt, salty sea salt sounds best terrible. I'm working with the producer Luke Abbott on music for the Lost and Found stage production. We've been having lots of fun making wild music. Yeah, like when it's and then, found, yeah. You know, there's boat building scenes, for example, so we've been able to create rhythm tracks out of a saw and a hammer. We've accidentally sort of made a really weird, poppy, experimental record. I'm from a town called Bethesda in Wales, in North Wales, and there was a sort of guitar music boom there in the 1980s. I used to pick up pop radio from Dublin because the mountains blocked Radio 1. My brother was in a punk band. There was equipment around the house. So it's just a gradual process, just being around music all the time. The first music I remember is probably sort of Welsh language, pop music and folk music. Lots of things related to Welsh language culture. People like Tequin Ivan. I remember going to see him play in 1976 and sitting in the front row. Just a guy with a guitar. I remember watching Akerail on TV. They were like a folk boy band, I suppose, with long hair. They sung sort of um, songs about political activism. Um, just really exciting and inspiring stuff. And so I, I was starting to write songs sort of at five years old or something. It's extreme, extremely hard to be a full-time professional musician in the Welsh language. So you do it for the, for the love of it and you have established world-class uh, artists like, you know, Karen Jarman or someone, but they, they'd have a day job as well. So I've never considered it something to give up because I've never seen it as something that's necessarily a, a profession. You know? I've been in situations where I'm playing sort of bigger, bigger shows with certain expectations, but I still find it really important to have a space where I can experiment completely and um, a situation where it's still open to chance, especially when I'm working out songs or trying to figure out a piece of music. <laughs> it can be extremely liberating. I mean. Unfortunately, musicians, speaking for myself, are notoriously irresponsible. Uh, but irreverence is more appealing than sentimentality. But I don't uh, misuse irreverence either. I fall into kind of um, predictable traps. The music I make is, is, is fairly predictable. And, you know, like, I, I love working with uh, strong melodies. And I love the way melodies can alter your uh, your whole mood, or your whole outlook on, on life. And I don't know, I got a big growl once from um, someone from a record company that I was smiling too much on stage. He sort of pinned me to a corner after the show, this guy in leather trousers, and said, you know, you're smiling too much on stage, it's so unprofessional, you know. It's like, what, you know. But um, I, I don't think I took any notice of it, but I did feel it was terrible advice that I shouldn't be myself, you know. People starting out have an understanding of their time and their, the culture they exist in that um, experience doesn't give you. When you're starting out, you have a better instinctive understanding of, of your time and your place and there's a certain um, energy and vigor to what you do that is way off perfectionism, but it has a certain energy that um, can't be replicated. I hadn't heard about the book, The Lost and Found, but I thought I hadn't. And then they asked if I was interested and I was obviously interested, but um, they sent me a copy and I realized I had three of the copies in the house that um, I'd read to my kids you know, when they were growing up. It's a very playful book, so we've been making really playful music, letting our imaginations fly. And I've used 
recording methods have never used before, so it's been quite exciting. We wanted to create something that sounded quite old. So we've been feeding music into programs that make it sound like uh, 78 RPM records from the 1930s as well. With my own music, I usually just collate things over a, a long period of time. You know, I keep ideas in books and they'll gradually turn into songs. And then with something like Last and Found, something as simple as just the, the meter of the title suggests a particular rhythm. So the, the core ideas are usually triggered by something really simple. I don't use a particular space or anything really. I think time is more important than space when it comes to writing. You know, you can write in any space or outdoors or on, on the bus. So I try not to sort of force anything out. I think ideas like writer's block suggests that you're supposed to be having things coming out of you all the time which doesn't sound very realistic. When you've made a few records, it's inevitable that every record you do is pretty similar to everything else you've done. Sometimes it helps to write about a different theme or and then it ends up something exactly like your other records anyway, but at least you've tried, you know. Every situation is different, so I think it's good to be open to making something different every time. Or that's why it's exciting to me to, you know, do music for a play. Or I found it really rewarding because I usually write songs about myself and my feelings, you know. Or, and it's good to get out of that and write about different subject matter and put myself in other people's shoes. Lost and Found is going to be quite a moving experience. Musically, there's some very melodic, melancholy, and memorable songs, I, I hope, um, that, that I'll stay with people and without being too overly sentimental. A lot of it is set in the big wide open seas, so it's going to be quite epic, I think. It'd be a matter of giving yourself to the, to the sea, you know. <laughs>